Okay, so the quadratic formula. So really what we're looking at here is the number of roots, and we're going to use the quadratic formula as our main uh, method to get there. Um, but when we're looking at that, it's often helpful for us to know kind of how we're getting the quadratic formula. And really what we're doing is solving our general quadratic equation, our standard quadratic equation, by completing the square. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. You probably wouldn't have to do this in any sort of testing situation, but you should know how to do it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is factor out the a value. from the first two terms, and then we have plus c equals zero. And I'm not gonna give a whole lot of explanation here. I think that you should have done this before, but if you haven't, um, this is just a refresher. So we've got x squared plus b over ax. Now we have to add half of that squared, so we half um, b over a, make it b over two a, and then square it, it becomes b squared over four a squared, two squared is four, a squared is obviously a squared. And then um, plus c subtract, and now we're gonna multiply an a times that whole thing that we just created. So we're multiplying an a by this whole part right here, which is gonna get rid of the bottom, um, or one of the a's on the bottom. So we're going to have b squared, I'll put the a in just to show you, a over 4a squared equals 0. And then really that a and that squared goes away. So now we've got b squared over 4a. Um, I'm going to change that c as well. I'm going to make it 4ac over 4a. Okay, so I've just multiplied the top and bottom by 4a, multiplied it by 1. Now let's complete the square. So we get a x plus, and we're going to get b over 2a, all squared. And then we get, um, we're going to move the other stuff to the other side, and I'm going to make it all one fraction because we've got a common denominator. So the negative b squared becomes a positive b squared. So b squared minus 4ac, the positive 4ac becomes a negative, all over 4a. Now we're going to divide by the a, so the a is going to go down to the bottom of the other side of the fraction. So we get b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared, or 4a times a. Now we're going to square root the other side. Now we talked about in class, and you should have known that if you square root something, you have to add a plus or a minus. We only have to do it to either the top or the bottom. We're going to do it to the top because it's just an easier way to look at it. So we're going to have x plus b over 2a. And actually, if I square root the bottom, so we're going to have plus or minus square root, and you should see the quadratic formula kind of starting to show up here, over the square root of 4a squared is 2a. Square root of 4 is 2, a squared obviously is a. So we square rooted the top and bottom, we added our plus and minus in, and now all I have to do is move that negative b over. So we get x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We have a common denominator. So we get the quadratic formula of negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now I'm not going to keep writing that out throughout the note, but that is the quadratic formula. So the next slide, just really quick on Question three there, I changed the positive to a negative just to show my point, but we're gonna solve using the quadratic formula. Okay, so the first one here, we've got x equals negative negative eight would be positive eight plus or minus square root of negative eight squared minus four times one times 16 all 
over 2 times 1 is going to be 8 plus or minus. It's going to be 0 because 64, well, 64 and 64. So plus or minus the square root of 0, which is just 0. And that's going to be 4. So we've got two equal roots, or one root in this case, that are both 4. 8 plus 0, 8 minus 0 is two equal roots. But you could just say that it's one root. Okay, so this has one solution. The next one, we've got x equals negative 5 plus or minus square root of 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times 14 all over 2 times 1, which is negative 5 plus or minus uh, 25 minus, what is that, 40 and 6, 56, so 51 minus 20 is 31, so we get negative 31 over 2, I believe if that's right, it doesn't matter, the answer is negative which means there's no real solutions because we have a negative square root. And then the last one here, we would get x equals three plus or minus the square root of three squared minus four times one times six, all over two a. Three plus or minus the square root of 24 Oh, that's a positive 6 now, though. Or double negative. So we're adding 24 to 9. So we're going to get 33. Over. And that A shouldn't be an A. It should be a 1. And so that means we're going to have two real roots. So I'm not going to simplify that. We just have two roots here. Okay. So here we had one root. And then in the middle, we had no roots. So what can we look at here? We can look at the square root part, or the b squared minus 4ac. So b squared minus 4ac. When it was positive, or greater than 0, we had two real roots. This is the most common one when you're first learning it, or learning the quadratic formula. You're going to have two answers. If b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, well, here we have one answer or one real root, or two equal roots. Um, let's change that to one root. Or two equal. I don't like the two equal because it is essentially one root, but some people say that and some textbooks say that, so we will leave that. And then we have 4ac is less than zero, no real roots because we end up with an imaginary number. Now this b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. Um, it just tells us the number of roots without having to go through the whole equation to figure it out. Okay, you can see in the first one we have zero, so we're adding nothing, so it's just gonna be one. The second one, we can't have an imaginary number in either equation, so we get none. And the third one, we're gonna get plus root 33 or minus root 33, both are gonna give an answer. So use the discriminant to determine the number of roots. So we're going to look at b squared minus 4ac. We're just making it relative to 0. So here we have 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 9. So 6 squared is 36 minus 36, which is 0. Therefore, 1 root, or 1 real root, you could say. Now, this next equation isn't in the right form, so we need to rearrange it. We're going to multiply everything by x to get rid of the fraction. So we're going to have 3x squared minus 5x. Um, I'll do it in two steps. Equals 4. And then 3x squared minus 5x minus 4 equals 0. And then b squared minus 4ac. So we get negative 5 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 4. So we're getting 25 plus, um, what is it, 12 and 4 is going to be 48. 
and it's plus because it's a double negative. So we've got 6873, which you don't actually need to get the answer. You just know that it's positive, therefore two roots. Okay. Now the last part of the note here, um, we're looking at an equation that's got a value of K. We want to find when there are two real roots, when there are no roots, and when there are two equal or one root. I think the one root one's kind of the easiest because we're setting it equal to zero. And then we can kind of talk about how we're going to get the other answers. Okay, so we want to have b squared minus 4ac equals zero. So in this case, we're going to have k or negative k squared minus 4 times 2 times 3 equals zero. I'm going to move that 4 times 2 times 3 to the other side. 4 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. So we're going to have negative k squared. Or actually, let's just square that. We're going to have k squared, because negative k times negative k is k squared equals 20, what, is it? what did I say, 24. So then k is equal to plus or minus 24, okay? If k was equal to positive 24, then back in our equation, we'd have 2x squared minus root 24x plus 3. Now, when we square that root 24, it's going to end up um, making our value equal to 0. If we had the negative, it's the same thing. It's just going to be a positive. But when we square it, because we're squaring a value, they're both going to be equal to 0. Now, what we have to look at here is to have two real roots. Our values are going to have to be greater than root 24. But really, it could also be less than negative root 24. Because then regardless of what the equation is, when I square it, the number is going to be greater than 24 itself. So what we have to look at is k has to be either less than negative root 24 or k has to be greater than root 24. Because if k was root 23, when I squared both sides, um, I'll write it out here. So if k was root 23, whoops, 23, we're just looking at this line right here because really we could work from that line in both cases. And we squared it. Well, root 23 squared is just going to be 23. We know 23 doesn't equal 24, but it's also not greater than 24. And for us to have two real roots, we need it to be greater than 24 because we need it to be a positive number. We need b squared to be bigger than 24 so that when we take that 24 away it's bigger than zero so in this case we need it to either be less than negative root 24 like negative root 25 all squared would be 25 okay for no real roots then our solution is going to fall between those two values okay because we don't want to include zero we don't want that so we're going to have k in the middle and it's going to be greater than negative root 24, but less than root 24. That's the example that I have there in red, like root 23 would give us a number that's less than 24. So if we did b squared minus 24, we're going to have 23 minus 24, and that's a negative number. Remember, this is all in an equation, so they don't actually have to be equal to one another because they're just part of the quadratic equation. That's a little bit harder, but once you look at some more examples, you'll wrap your mind around it. Um, there's a worksheet on the 